to the right place. You know, and I think, you know, we're, we're kind of a yin and a yang, Jared and I. Um, and I see, you know, but that's when the best, how the best teams are put together. And we both have our have our strengths and have our weaknesses, and I feel like we're both in a really good place for each other's weakness, et cetera. So. I think one thing to harp on that you just actually mentioned was that, you know, you didn't go home just like after, oh, great, first day. See you for day two. Right. You sat around, and you're like, Let's, how can we get better? And so, and even you know, after celebrating year one completion and y'all have been tallying up awards and um, y'all have great Yelp reviews. I fucking hate Yelp. I'm mm. the cunt. Don't here. even get me started on Yelp. I will you literally. Can use, for, you can say cunt for we can one say and a half hours. I will talk only about Yelp and how much I hate it. Uh, I get a call from a Yelp salesman probably two times every month. And they're still trying to sell me on advertising with them, even though they won't take these reviews down that are offensive. Like offensive. I mean, so we have one that literally calls one of our first employees. She she wasn't you know she wasn't great. But ideal hospitality wise, calls her an Asian bitch. That is still on Yelp. Yeah, one year later. We don't fucking like Yelp. The Karens that ask for the managers and then our, cow, our <laughs> keyboard cowboys, so that, like, they can hide behind their, their name. It's bullshit. I fucking hate hey, Yelp so goddamn much. Yes. We're, we're, here, we're here to make people happy. Right. You know, and if someone tells us they didn't have a good time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to hug them. You know, like I'm not going to try to get mad at them. You know, it's their opinion. I want to make them feel like they got their money's worth. Um, so if someone says to me, hey, you know, I didn't have a good time. I'm going to say, oh, man, I am so sorry. But if you send me, if you go post on Yelp before I have the chance to, like, talk to you, it's a different ballgame. You know, I, I, it's hard for me to hug you via email or right. over the phone, you know. And I'm not speaking about literally hugging if someone. Right. Not everyone wants a hug from me. If you're yeah. thinking of leaving a no, Yelp you review. Look like a good, just, you look like a good hugger. I'm a I'm professional just, hugger on the side. If it's a negative review, just please contact us. Yeah. I am here. Pretty much every day. Ross is the same. Like, we are here in a very small restaurant. You can find us, and we will gladly make it right. And we want to make it right because we want to get better. And so it's and not that I hate. those are necessary for those that are listening at home. Right. Just, if you want to make fun of Kip, take it to, give us a five-star <laughs> review, and right. then call me whatever. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, what I do is I look at Yelp. And I say, what are the patterns? If there's a pattern that's developing that's bad, that's something that'll change. But, you know, there's so many reviews that are basically like, I was in a fight with my boyfriend. And then this happened and this happened. I'm like, I don't know how that's relevant to the restaurant or what we did. Uh, but it's not helpful. And it doesn't help us get better either. So, no, but, you know, to kind of touch on what Ross was saying before, it's like when we opened... It's kind of the running joke. You're busier than you're ever going to be at your least prepared level. So that day one, you have no idea how it's going to run to the point where that first person came in, and that's actually a Yelp story as well. That first first person came in, and we forgot their coleslaw and their pickle, which comes with every sandwich, because we had no idea what we were doing. No, there was no expo. We were kind of running around. You know, we're greeting people. There's all these things happening, so we forget their coleslaw and pickle. One star rail preview. Still up. Still affecting our score. <laughs> that, that, that's why we agreed to hate Yelp. So you're, you're <laughs> me. And we use Google reviews as well. Right. Google, yeah. It seems there's a little more validity to that because those are real Google. Like right. you have to like make an account out of like your email address. Like, mm-hmm. You're not yeah. just again the keyboard cowboy. Those I, I hate saying the c word because I tried to bring it back and it didn't work. So now I get judged for calling people cunts. But it's in the British <laughs> sense where it's you know really watered down and they call everyone just yeah. You know, He's a cheeky cunt sometimes. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. Those the people that are on Yelp that take the time out of their day to go because they don't know what happened, like how much blood, sweat, and tears a staff goes into. And maybe that first woman, maybe she was not supposed to be working counter, and she was just trying to pick up slack. And then you have to go and disparage her, and then this restaurant all because you're kind of a cunt. Yeah. And so you can be Chris is a cunt a lot, but like we that's the I you reserve that word for this segment called mm-hmm. fuck Yelp. But people and you know, people in the hospitality business, they're just like anybody else. We have good days, we have bad days, like, you know. But I always I always think if I have a good experience at a restaurant or wherever I go to eat or something, I'll send them an email. I'm not gonna go I don't post food reviews on Yelp or like do a review. Sure. I send a personal email saying like, Hey, 
the moment I walked in the door, I felt welcome, like, you guys right. were great, things like that. So I just wish, like, people would do that kind of more often. I don't do any of that. I just get on Instagram and post pictures of the food I uh, eat. hundred percent. That works. And that works. The problem that. is that... that. They, 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 oh, yeah, check yeah. out all the pics that we just posted today <laughs> as you're listening to this. The problem is that uh, everybody's on their phone. 100% of the time. So we'll see people literally at our door. They're looking in. They're looking for people's reaction. But what they're really doing as well is they're on their phone and they're looking at our Yelp score. We're looking at our Google reviews, whatever. And sometimes those people don't come in because maybe they're reading that review from the first day of service. And so it's just it's not a helpful thing. Uh, if you don't have anything nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> it's fair. I, or, 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 reach, or reach out, you know, speak directly. You know, I mean, they're, they're not much, you know, I, I'll be honest, I do read every single review. Oh, man, you can't get lost in the <laughs> well, comments, I mean, I, man. I, you know, well, it's, I would it's, be a broken, double, it's a double-edged sword. Ross is also responding to everyone. Yeah, I respond to everyone. I'd be broken if I did. <laughs> it's, it's a double-edged sword, uh, but, you know, there's moments of elation when you read some of those because we're very, very fortunate and we worked very hard to garner a great response from people. But, yes, when those come through that are not constructive whatsoever, just straight up like, you guys have no idea what you're doing, which, you know, I've seen that. I've seen that <laughs> said. Um, it, it's just, it's upsetting. It's hurtful. It's not only about my ego. It's about my team and how hard they work every day yeah. to put out food that is, I can say with confidence, super high quality, really well priced, and fun, you know, so. And they always say, it's like that, I don't know, maybe a teacher taught me that growing up, but it's like, or no, it's someone in like a marketing class, but like, if you say a negative comment about a place, it travels ten times for every like one positive. Like, you can tell everybody that. By the way, we're having one of the special sandwiches, and it's a Cubano called a Cubano, where it's got a little of their own twist on it, and then it's a pineapple relish. And it's fantastic. Oh, and the, the tarragon mustard to it too. But mm. this, uh, if you're a Cubano fan, like I've said multiple times on this podcast. It is fucking divine. It's fire. Y'all have, you should come down here and try it while it's still on the menu. Much appreciated. Thank you. I'm, in, I'm still eating it while I just got to go with it. Well, so, so earlier we kind of had a part that you guys are open. Let's see, you guys open at 9 a.m. So do you guys right. serve kind of bagel sandwiches, yep. breakfast sandwiches? Yeah, so we get our bagels from Rosenberg's. We think that their product is extremely superior to anything else in the area for, for the bagel. He's also a New York guy, Polly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we know Josh well, and we're super happy to be working with them. So we do a handful of breakfast items, a couple of breakfast sandwiches, um, and some egg bowls where we scramble some fun ingredients into the eggs. And we, we get a good, a good amount of people returning for that, and it's, that's, really, that's really about the neighborhood. That's about the businesses in the area and the people who are living here. That's really that's super important to us, getting people in, in here as frequently as possible for breakfast. And you're in yeah. a great neighborhood for because I feel like those that are in this neighborhood, where you're obviously in Rhino, are those that like to support not only other businesses in this area. We see a lot of like supporting local business. You know, we like to team up and you know, y'all all get together and do like the stupid 5Ks or you know, mm. like non-athletic things. I, I get behind, but they have. Like, <laughs> And we went and did a, 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 re, a vintage reggae vinyl swap party over a ratio recently where we served some sandwiches and bagels and stuff for brunch and go hang out with the guys at ratio. So, you know, that's the kind of thing exactly what yeah. you're talking about. And right now we're actually talking uh, block distilling because we want to open on Friday and Saturday nights and serve our food over there. Oh, nice. Um, because it's, like, like you said, you know, we're always kind of g- going to be thought of as a breakfast lunch place. It doesn't make a lot of sense for us to open for dinner, especially with no alcohol. Uh, but we have to take advantage of this neighborhood and how amazing it is for that nightlife because people come up to me every day like, oh, I haven't tried your restaurant, but I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's because they're walking this street, this amazing bar crawl. Mm-hmm. But we're not part of that, and so we're just kind of missing a kind of major part of the neighborhood, and so that's kind of the reason we're trying to kind of make that happen. And Stowaway, we've had them on the podcast as well. They kind of sure. said the same thing. They they teamed up with like Pond Pond, that bar next door, and they did Love like bar. I, I know it's really Love cool little bar, but they, they they tried like a and they still may be doing. It. I just haven't been over there. It's like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sure. But they. Mm-hmm. Um, they may have a liquor license, I don't know, but they may have to use Bon Bon for that or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. But they were saying the same thing. They're like, we love our breakfast and lunch crowd, but we kind of want to get our hands dirty in the, in the evening time. Would you bring what y'all already do on the menu, or would y'all say, let's get, I mean, you are creative. Y'all have creative mm-hmm. dishes. 
Would you start to kind of drum up something that kind of speaks about y'all, but is a dinner vibe? Yeah, so it'll probably be very similar to what we do at lunch, uh, but with some more shareable items because that's kind of how people eat at a bar. Yeah. Um, and the goal is Fire to hmm, appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so the goal is to have people want to stay longer at Block Distilling. So we're helping them, and they're helping us kind of thing. And, I mean, we saw, again, I hate to reference the same asshole that I have to say twice, but John <laughs> Tafford says that you're more inclined to stay at a bar if you're able to order food. Also, if you have chairs, have backs on them because they can recline. You know what I mean? Fun fact. Um, I like that. And it kind of makes me want to replace my stools over there. Really? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean to say that. I, I just watched a lot of bar rescue, no. Uh, rescue no reservations, and chopped. Those are the three. Okay. No, I, I, and live football. I 100% actually agree with that, and part of the thing for those stools are, are actually that we, you know, know that people are kind of waiting for sandwiches over there, and we didn't want to clog that area. I understand that. Um, one of the great disappointments with this space for me now is it's not big enough to do booth seating, which I think is classic deli, uh, so maybe next location. <laughs> yeah, round two. So round we, two. We've seen some folks in y'all's neighborhoods that have had lucky success, or not lucky success, but success and luck, you gotta get a little bit of everything. Yeah. And, they're, and they've started sending their second locations down towards Wash Park. So sure. I'll just put the bug in your ear. If okay. you end up going down there, credit this podcast. For sure. Um, <laughs> For but sure. yeah, it's Fire good. on the Mountain Uncle or the, and Hop Alley or yeah. whatever, the ones I was thinking about. But that does, that, that brings me to my next point. So we've talked a little bit about the neighborhood, we've talked about the restaurant. Um, all of our listeners, you can see all of these dank ass foods that they have. We have pictures on the Instagram at no Vacancy Colorado. Uh, what's all social media? Uh, so just Rice Society. Society. Yeah, at, yeah. At Rice Super Society. easy everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all Rice Society. Yeah, if you work in this area, someone pick up a sandwich. Yeah. Like I, I would if I worked here. I, I heard someone, someone ruin Twitter for me, so and I stick to Instagram <laughs> now. I think we have 56 followers on Twitter. I'm so say, I don't think, I don't think that's even like a thing that happens. Yeah. I, I think I posted a re, uh, like a thing the other day because they had this like sandwich uh, ranking, and for some reason a uh, pastrami sandwich not on the list. What? B bacon sandwich was a thing. Bacon sandwich isn't a thing. That's not, bacon not a, and not, bread. Not, That's a, a, not a BLT. Not a BLT. Not a BLT. BLT was on there, but okay. there was a bacon sandwich as like number eight. I'm like, who's just eating bacon on bread? I'll just put the bacon. It was a terrible. Yeah, exactly. I'd rather grab it off the tray. Yeah, exactly. Bread. Exactly. I just came up with a brilliant fuck Mary kill. Should we do it? I mean, if you, if it's brilliant. Reuben, pastrami. Okay. And we'll do a BLT. You have to fuck one, marry one, kill one. Both of you guys are going to play. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. We ask hard-hitting questions here on Dateline tonight. That was a high five. I think we got some water. Don't you go. I think that's great. I mean, great definitely, job. you know, I'd say you got to marry that Reuben. I, I, yeah, I th- you got to marry that I think, I think I think I, I, think I would uh, marry the pastrami sandwich. Mm. Um, although it would I'd fuck that pastrami sandwich. <laughs> <It's ruined me. laughs> I think I think I'd have to what? kill the BLT. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> kill yeah. the BLT. I would kill the BLT if you're asking me about those yeah. three. It's a tough one between the Reuben and the uh, pastrami sandwich, though. I mean, a BLT is delicious, but let's be honest, it's. It's not really, you know, it's bacon, yeah, lettuce, and a yeah. tomato. I mean, yeah. But you throw a fried green tomato. Ooh. And that's money. That's, 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 one of the things I, that's one of the things us Southerners really enjoy is a uh, fried green BLT. Uh, I that love a fried green tomato. Yeah. God, it's been a while since I've had fried green tomatoes. Probably New Orleans. I saw they were doing a... The exact same what you're talking about the other day over at Smoke, which I don't know if you guys have checked out yet. It's, it's the barbecue place? Yeah, super, super good. Probably those are my favorite wings in town. Whoa, yes, really? Yes, yes. Better than Fire on the Mountain. I'm sorry, I love Fire Whoa, on the Mountain. Whoa, what about sauce wise are we talking about? So if they're smoked, and I think they just drop them in the fryer to get them crispy. Right. So get real there is, I don't know if there's a lot of a lot of sauce going on. No, but the thing is, what I was saying is Fire on the Mountain. Oh, the sauces at Fire on the Mountain are out of control. That's spicy yeah. peanut. I use it lube, though. The very rare chance of getting sex. <laughs> if I get sex, that, I use that spicy That gets food. really exciting, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Jeff's <laughs> dog loves it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, um, wait, okay, so can, I like that you just, Doc's love peanut you butter. just did the, the chicken wings. <laughs> Jerry, what's your chicken wing place in town? I mean, yeah, I'd probably go fire. 
Uh, it's just, there, though. it's just easy. There's, I, I will say the Fire on the Mountain wins for decor and feeling over smoke any 